This morning's guest has been the mayor of Spartanburg for six and a half years, and he's never been in a campaign. Who is he? You'll meet him coming up next on Carolina People. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're in the lobby of the Spartanburg Memorial Auditorium. We're focused on the city of Spartanburg and we're visiting with its mayor, the Honorable Bill Barnett. Good morning. Good morning. It's a little morning. early for people like me, you know. Uh, you're not a 6.30, 6.00 a.m. guy rolling well, into the auditorium? Well, actually I am, but, yeah. but uh, you didn't offer me my first kind of cup of coffee, so I'm, <laughs> I'm at a deficit. I, I can't do it for the next 30 minutes. Can, we, can I make up for it at 7.30? You can do it. That's great. This is a tremendous setting, and of course the city of Spartanburg, a lot, a lot going on. Of course, last week, a very successful Miss South Carolina pageant and the contestants in from literally all parts of the state. Terrific, and we're delighted that they're here. It's a great economic boost for this community. It brings a lot of young people uh, and their families and friends here, it gives us a chance to show off our community. We're very excited, and uh, the Sanders are great folks to work with. So it, it works out well, and, and we're honored they're here, and it's all part of the July 4th celebration. Absolutely. So it's fun to put it all together and have a little electricity in our community. Was there an open hotel room in the entire city? I mean, I can't even imagine. Of course, the Marriott a couple blocks away was packed. The host hotel, I'm sure a lot of outlying hotels were packed. Well, I hope, I hope uh, every hotel room was used and that would be great if it happened that way. It is early, you haven't had that cup of coffee, but do you mind if we call you Bill or do you require uh, your uh, honor? No, your honor is not appropriate. <laughs> Bill not is at fine. seven, not at At seven in the morning, no. Bill is just great. That's great. That's but we're great. honored you're here and thank you for your interest in Spartanburg. Oh, very definitely, very definitely. Yesterday, Mark Scott was with us, your city manager, learned a lot about the city and how it's run and how it sounds like it's run very effectively. Well, I think he does a great job and we have a, a lot of great professionals and it's fun to be on the team, and it's fun to try to move this community forward. You, you know how important these city governments can be to creating both the vision and image and energy for investment and for people enjoying their lifestyles. And uh, wherever you are in this state, I think cities are very important and uh, critical to the, to the health and welfare of not just those who live in the city, but all the people that live around those cities. Definitely. Bill, have you been in public service for many years? No, I, I entered public service in a unique way. I, I actually was elected uh, in a write-in candidacy in oh, come on. 2001 and uh, took office in January of 2002. So I guess I've been mayor now six and a half years. As a write-in candidate. Write -in Tell candidate. us about that. What well, that? it's a long story and like, you know, it's, it's a little bit like Russian history. It sort of gets embellished over oh, right. time. <laughs> we like but embellishments. We yeah. like embellishments. Uh, in politics, that helps. Right, on a Friday morning. But uh, we had a very popular mayor, a gentleman who had been mayor for nine years, and uh, in order for he, him to stay as mayor, he had to come up with a thousand write-in uh, petition signatures. Right. It turned out that when he turned them in, that a good part of them were proven not to be acceptable, either no. because people didn't live in the city or right. were not eligible voters. So the election commission chose to open it up to a write-in candidacy and a group of people came to me and asked me, I just sold our company, right. asked me if I'd be interested in, in running for public office. I said, absolutely not. And about a month later they came back and asked me again. I said, absolutely not. And finally they said, look, we're going to write your name in and, and uh, they did. We hope you'll accept it if you win. If yes. you win. So it's a, it's a long story made short, but that's what happened. That is tremendous. You mentioned our company having sell, having sold our company. You shared with us earlier this morning that I believe your grand, grandfather, great my, my great grandfather began the company. They were in the fiber business. At the time, it was wool and cotton and things of that nature. Right. It morphed into synthetic fibers, right. but uh, it uh, was a hundred and. Three years old, we sold it. It's 110 years old now. And Is that right? So it's continued and doing well? It's continued and it's done well, and a great group of people who helped build it uh, as part of our team. And I, it was fun to allow them to take it where they wanted to go, which is what it's how it's worked out. That's tremendous. How exciting. How it was exciting. Great. What keeps you busy now other than the mayorship? Well, I thought at one point when I was going to retire that I'd try some other things, and it sort of has given way to the mayor. Yeah, mayoral responsibilities, but 
um, I've had a lot of fun, and I have a young family, so it's exciting to see them grow up, and uh, it's fun to see this community grow, and oh, yeah. we've had a lot of public and private uh, energy to, uh, to make Spartanburg a better place. I it's understand fun. your wife is a former Miss Spartanburg from, wife, the, mid, from the mid 80s. From the early 80s. Early 80s. Well, you're oh, nice. Yeah. She'd appreciate maybe the late 80s. <laughs> but uh, my wife was Miss Spartanburg, and, and uh, she didn't make Miss South Carolina, but she got close. Right. And, uh, and we got married in 1986. We have three great kids, and uh, very proud of all of them. My daughter's 21, and she's going to be a senior in college up in. Providence, Rhode Island. My son, Will, just graduated from Spartanburg High School. Great. And he's going to college next year. And my son, John, is a 16-year-old. Is that so right? we're all happy to be a part of a growing family. What got your daughter up to Providence? And what is up there? Is Brown up there? Brown. My son's right. going to Brown. Great. So my daughter went is at Rhode Island School of Design, which okay. is, uh, she loves art. Right. And uh, that's where she wanted to go. And my son likes Brown, and I guess he likes the freedom and creativity of Brown. Sure. So uh, they're both going to be in Providence. I, I told them I was going to take an apartment up there and watch over both of their lives. <laughs> Get cameras up there. Get That's cameras. right. Check on them. I watch love them it. carefully. I love it. How exciting. Well, actually, my son told me he wouldn't go anywhere within a 1,000 miles of his dad, so that's probably why he's up there. <laughs> he obviously must be pretty tight with his sis, though, his older sis. He is tight with his sis. and. Uh, all three of them get along well, which is great. That is, that is. You know, you think about so much within city to city, some of the differences. What are some of the, the big aspects about the city of Spartanburg? If you had a minute to share with viewers about some of the special aspects of this city that you'd want well, folks in the PD or the Strand to know about. Well, I think uh, Spartanburg is a great place. You know, we all think in terms of going to Charleston or the Grand Strand or Myrtle Beach, uh, sure. any of these places uh, for fun. Spartanburg is a, is a great part of of that matrix. I mean, we've got uh, a lot of exciting things. We have six colleges in this community. Over 12,000 young people matriculate each year in Spartanburg. Mm. We've have a, we have a new cultural center downtown, which is a $47 million enterprise, mm. $38 million of which came from the private sector. Is that right? So we're proud of that. Um, a, a growing concept of, of uh, a good place to be. It's uh, very philanthropic. It's got a great faith-based community. Mm -hmm. We've got uh, a lot of things happening in, in this area, not just in Spartanburg, but in the upstate. And uh, we're proud of where we're headed in this community, and we've got a ways to go. We're only 30 miles from the mountains, which is, which is great. Right, and, right. And uh, I think it's a great place to live, a great place to play and, and to work. Uh, BMW is here, of course. Yes, and, yes. Uh, one of our uh, big positives is, is what they represent, but sure. we've got a lot of other great businesses, Millican, Extended Stay America, right. Denny's is headquartered here. Is that right? Here so, in Spartanburg. In Spartanburg. So oh, we're, boy. we've got a lot going on, and uh, we're very proud of our work ethic, and and very proud of the uh, the focus we have on on um, a lot of uh, quality of life amenities. That those make, those make, four companies. Not to cut you off, those four companies you mentioned sure impact a lot of folks. We think about it in Myrtle Beach, Denny's alone, let alone BMW, Extended Stay America, and uh, whatever the other one, Millican, obviously. Well, Millican. <laughs> you know, all of us, um, we're more closely intertwined than some people understand. The port, which of course is in Charleston, right. uh, uh, features uh, a, lot of, a lot of key elements that are important to BMW and right. important to Milken oh, and yeah. Michelin. And so there's, there's many ways in which the state is, is uh, connected. And I think uh, there's a lot more that is important to... Uh, focus on how we're connected than, right. than we're separated in South Carolina. Bill, you mentioned the 12,000 students matriculating here annually. That's a tremendous number. Well, when you think of Converse and Wofford, right. both are downtown, in, in, not far from where we sit this morning. Virtually a block away. Uh, Wofford's a block away, and right. Converse is maybe four or five blocks away. Sure. You have USC Upstate, which is a large campus, 4,500 students. Wow. Spartanburg Community College, which is part of our technical college system. Right. And we have Spartanburg Methodist College. So. There's, there's an awful lot of energy with our college uh, environment here, and we're very proud of it. We, we actually have a college town initiative which, which ties these groups together. And uh, we have a lot of other parts of the, of the uh, community effort here, too. Right in front of where we sit is a dedication to John Bryan, who started the uh, assault on Mount Mitchell. Huh. Uh, Spartanburg is the first bike town in South Carolina. The first bike, bike town. town. We have a large commitment to healthy lifestyles and bikes. And if you go out right in front of this building, 
you'll see a, a, the image, a silhouette of a bike, which was dedicated to Mr. Bryan, who started the, uh, this assault on Mount Mitchell 31 years ago. I love it. I it's, love it. Now, great. I didn't see you riding up on your bike this morning, Bill. I didn't. Not you didn't morning. have your cup of coffee. That's I didn't right. have my cup yeah. of coffee, yeah. and I don't have my Lycra out front. Um, <laughs> but, but I have been on bikes. I've been seen on bikes before. I love it. I love it. Of course, this is also the home of the South Carolina School for the Deaf and Blind. It is that, and we're very proud of that institution. Right. Actually, Spartanburg is a very interesting uh, community, not just the city, but the entire community. We, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of energy, a lot of enthusiasm. Uh, we're, we're finding... Uh, our brand, if you will, and I think uh, it's a great place for people to visit. I hope some of the people listening at this early hour in the morning will um, will find a reason to come visit us, not just because maybe their daughter or son goes to college here, but because sure. they want to see a BMW be, being made or oh, yeah. they, they go to the test track at BMW. They can do a lot of things that are fun and exciting to do. Permanent population in the city of Spartanburg? About 40,000. Is that a, right? And about 270,000 in the county. But there's about 100,000 that live within two miles of the city. So we are a, uh, an urban population, if you will, of about 140,000. Uh -huh. Boy, that's a substantial figure. And that doesn't even count, count the students who are matriculating here. Those are not factored into those numbers. Those so it's not even markedly larger right. with the uh, student population. I'm going to try to talk you into moving out of Myrtle Beach and coming on up here. We'd like to work on you getting you down to Myrtle. I'm sure there's a lot of folks uh, down there that would love to have a young family uh, moving on down there, and obviously that happens quite a bit. That's right. Oftentimes older folks, retirees, have found Myrtle Beach home. I bet you have a pretty substantial senior population here. Uh, we do. This is a, there's a great medical community here. We've got both the Spartanburg Regional Health System, which is the largest employer right. in the county, right. and we have several key elements of that organization, uh, the Gibbs Cancer Center and the Beard and Josie, uh, which is now part of the Beard and Josie Cancer Center, and a, and a great heart center here. Uh, so that part of the equation is important, and the Mary Black hospital system is yes. here. So we have great medicine in this area. Um, but, and, and so the retirees can both enjoy that medical capacity, but also they enjoy the access to the mountains, and they get to go to some of these college events. You know, not only do we have the, this terrific event that we just, ha we just housed um, with the uh, uh, Miss South, South Carolina, Carolina last South week, Carolina yes. scene, right. Uh, but we also have uh, many other events. The Shrine Bowl is held. The North South Carolina Shrine Bowl is held Didn't here. Didn't know that. And we've got uh, Twitchell Auditorium, which is a Converse College, and this auditorium, which has 3,000 um, seats, in which oh, yeah. uh, Vince Gill will be here, and, and his wife was here earlier this year. Is that right? So, I mean, it's fun to see a, a lot of these activities, and we're, we're gaining in our stature as a great place, as a destination place. Just for people, for viewers who may not be familiar with where Spartanburg sits uh, in relation to other cities, about how far is the drive time, let's say, to Columbia, Greenville, Atlanta, Charlotte? Well, we're on I-85 uh, on a dead line between Charlotte and Atlanta, uh -huh. and it's a, it's a straight line, and we're about 60 miles from Charlotte, about 30 miles from Greenville, right. maybe 150 miles from Atlanta, mm -hmm. and then if you go on the I-26 axis, sure. we're about 60 miles from Asheville. Uh -huh. sort of northwest, and then 90 miles from Columbia, and maybe 200 miles from Charleston. So right. we're at the crossroads of I-26 and I-85. Tremendous. So that's a, that's a great uh, uh, place for people to, to find us if right. they're looking on a map. Some of the folks, uh, both the contestants and even judges driving up from Myrtle Beach last week, it was about a four-hour drive right. up. So not a bad drive. Uh, to Spartanburg, even from the Myrtle Beach area. It's yeah, really it's, easier from Charleston it's, it's and other fun. parts of the state. One of the reasons we're called the hub city is because the railroads crossed here. When you think of it, the, the mountains wouldn't allow the railroads to go north from, say, a Greenville. Right. So they, they went up the Saluda grade towards Asheville. That's where a lot of the coal um, comes and goes, right. uh, still comes and, and goes. still comes and goes. I could see them out the hotel room. That's right. And, and so the, the railroads still cross here, and that's how we got the the name of uh, the Hub City. And we, we have a, a lot of uh, energy in our, in our cultural groups. We have, now have the Hub City Writers, which is a, a conglomeration of a lot of, of culturally interested people, people who write well. This is writers, not writers. Yeah. Writers. There's a lot of writers, writers out there, but writers. writers. Yeah, yeah. Um, you need and a lot of music. That ties you know, them together. Yeah. Marshall Tucker Band came from Spartanburg. A lot of great music uh, was spawned here, and we're very right. proud of that. 
about some other notable people? You mentioned one out front. Of course, a lot of viewers want to know about uh, what prompted you to run for re-election after the first time, but how about some other notable folks here uh, that coming out of the Spartanburg area? Any other claims to fame? There's well, probably so there, many. There are a lot of them. Yeah. I mean, we've yeah. had a lot you of great... Marshall Tucker Band. That's Marshall Tucker Band was one, and right. we've had a lot of entrepreneurs. Of course, Roger Milliken is is uh, legendary. George yes. Johnson has done a lot with yes. uh, with that. Uh, Jerry Richardson and Charlie Bradshaw both were here, and of course, Jerry went on to... They started... Um, uh, the, they had the first franchise of Hardee's, and Is Jerry went right? on to uh, yeah. to head up the... Uh, the Carolina, the Carolina Panthers. Panthers, yeah. So he he was a uh, he lived here and he and his partner lived here for a long time. And has we, recently gotten into the Bojangles business. The Bojangles believe, business, yeah. and that's been I understand they're they're re they're sure. replenishing that sure. that concept. Uh, a lot of great people in in this community, and uh, we're very proud of them, and we're very proud of uh, what they've been able to accomplish, and and uh, the energy they've given us, and we're trying to transpose that energy to the next generation. Yes. Bill, you mentioned, of course, being a write-in candidate in late 01, being obviously a successful write-in candidate, taking your position there in January of 02. But unless that's a seven- or eight-year term, you must have actually determined this was a good thing for you, and I want to stick it out and ran for re-election then. Well, or actually, uh, I guess your first election, yeah. Well, it was my f first, first election, actually running but no one all. actually ran against me so there was no election. Uh -huh. So I still have yet to have spent any money on getting into public well, that's office. That's a good sign. That's that must mean that folks are very happy with your service. Well, I think they're getting a little more tired. They're getting ready for, uh... for a change. <laughs> but uh, the, um, the reality was that uh, we had a lot of projects going on and, and I felt that uh, we had we'd become involved. We were trying to create change. We had a, a lot uh, in the works and to change at that time might not have been Right. best for the community so sure. we agreed to stay on and if anyone had run against me they might have beat me but as it turned out they didn't so um, they've been stuck with me but I you know I don't know what next year will bring sure. but I think uh, local government's an interesting phenomenon I think it's I think it's probably good for local uh, governmental officials to change every once in a while and get new ideas and allow yeah. other people to become involved mm -hmm. in the process Speaking of change, great opportunities. I gotta say, and you didn't let you didn't uh, say I couldn't get into it. Ronnie Allison, such a huge support of yours, another big name in the area. He said that Bill Barnett. If you get him on camera, you tell him I want him to run for governor. He's got to step out there and do that. Well, so what would you say to a Ronnie Allison? I'd say Ronnie Allison and his wife Rita are great people. Right. I'm fans of theirs, um, but I'm not gonna go further. I don't think in public life. I think there are other people that can represent our state and uh, I th I'm 65 I'll be 66 next year I think it's time for me to maybe spend time with my family or focus you better not on tell Rita stuff. that that's right yeah well, you better not now tell Rita back that. in the house I know exactly and, uh, and we're delighted she's there that's a great testament to uh, to this area yeah some hard-charging folks both male and female that are stepping out to represent this area and make a big commitment to that. I think I think it's fun we've, we've got great people and you know the only way these local communities can really work, I think, today is when you have good public and private partnerships. Right. Um, people in the private sector helping the public sector uh, create a vision and execute a vision. We've done that in, in a num number of projects in this community, and I think that's the key to Spartanburg, and I'm sure it's the key to other communities doing well, too. Mark talked some a little bit yesterday about some of the plans for the future as Spartanburg's laying out any big initiatives that, that you all are currently working on or even things that may happen after you get out of public service? Well, I think there are a, a number. I think we put a lot of things on the table, maybe too many things. Mark sometimes suggests to me that the list, we had a meeting a couple of weeks ago and they listed all the projects we've set forth and if we do them all well, and it's important not only to, to do things, but to do them with quality and with a long-term view in mind. So I think that's equally important as, as, as the, the quantity. Uh, a big project we have is, is a new business school, the U.S. C School of Business will move from their campus, which is just north of town, down into the center of our town. Right. And they're going to break ground on that in the fall of this year. Right. That's going to be named after George Dean Johnson, who's one of our big benefactors in town, an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And uh, that will bring 850 uh, juniors and seniors who are majoring in business into the center of our town. Tremendous. Which is a great right. effort. Right. And, and the public and private groups are getting together to help that happen. Uh, that's an important project. We've just completed uh, the Morgan Square upgrade downtown. We've got some parks and recreational 
programs that we're very interested in. We're going to put a skateboard in the middle of town so the kids don't have to skate on all of our public <laughs> property. Uh, we're, going, we're going to start a new uh, uh, recreation center on the southern part of our community. Right. Uh, a lot of housing initiatives. Great. So it's, it, there's, a, there's an awful lot going on in Spartanburg. And, and again, it's not just a question of, of coming up with ideas. It's a question of financing them properly right. and doing them with good quality so that the next generation is properly um, uh, satisfied that we did the right things and that they're sustainable over a long period of time. Yes, yes, we've just got a couple of minutes, Bill, and thinking about the other folks you serve with. Obviously, you oftentimes go out to rec represent the entire city and all elected officials of the city. Share with viewers real quick about the makeup of city council here, Spartanburg sure. City we, Council. We have a good city council. We have, um, our, our community is quite interesting. We, we have, in, in the city of Spartanburg, 40,000 people, about half African American and half is white. Is that right? And our council reflects that we, we've got a mayor pro tem right now, Kenneth Smith, who um, is an African American minister in town and has done right. a great job. Right. And we have um, Linda Dogan, who represents the north side where we currently sit. Right. Uh, Linda's a, a leader in our community, and uh, Robert Reeder, who represents the south side. Right. And then we we have three um, other representatives: Joe Spigner, uh, Junie White and Renee Carvo. Right. So the seven of us make up the team and mm -hmm. Mark Scott, as you know, we, we have a, a city manager form of government. Right. So right. Much like Myrtle, Myrtle Beach. Myrtle Beach. Yes. And, and we, uh, you know, Mark, most everybody reports to Mark and his responsibility is to execute the plans that the city council agree on. And we, and we really have uh, a lot of uh, common interests in this community. We, we want the community to grow for everybody. Uh, this isn't about a few people uh, growing. This is about everybody in our community. Uh, improving, and it's about all the people that live outside the city um, being proud of what we were able right, to do in the city. Right, right. Because in the end, when people come to town and want to put a job here, they're going to come downtown and see what the energy uh, of the community really looks like. They, you know, you can go up to a, a place in Boiling Springs or outside the community, but but in the end, people want to come downtown and see what kind of energy right. you reflect by what you do in your community. So I, I'm I'm excited about the leadership in our community, and I'm. I'm pleased and proud of what everybody's been able to do. It is a team sport. Oh, Communities yeah. are built by teams, not by individuals. Learning how to count, making sure the, right. the numbers are there, and that ultimately there's at least a majority of folks supporting an idea. I suspect, suspect you always wanted all seven, or was it nine? Seven. Seven, seven to be on uh, board. On we, you would like it. Doesn't it doesn't always happen. Yeah, it doesn't always happen, but r remarkably, this group has stayed together and prioritized. You know, government, local government's about taking scarce resources and prioritizing them into, into projects and into services to their community. And I think um, we've done a very good job of staying together and creating a, a common uh, vision that we could execute. Because we don't have the resources. If we we're all going to beat each other up, we wouldn't be very successful. I'm very proud of this group. I think they've come together well. That's tremendous, Bill. You know, so often times folks wonder, how does someone become a mayor? For you, we hear about it being a write-in issue, and then, of course, uh, uh, being re-elected or elected for the first time uh, in an actual piece there. Uh, well, it's, it's, it's an honor. You, you want to serve your community. Um, I don't think my ego's in play here. I mean, I, I'm not uh, in the mayor's job to run again. I'm in the mayor's job to do the best job I can with the help of the professionals on our team and, and the other members of council. So you, you, know, you just go out and do the best job you can every day. You, you, you take tough circumstances, some of them you can control, some of them you can't, and you try to uh, create an energy and an enthusiasm and a vision for the community, and you want everyone to feel good about the journey you travel. That's who we are, that's what local government's about, and right. that's what we're going to continue to try to do. Bill, how about your biggest inspiration? Who has been someone who has uh, really helped guide you or been a big inspiration for you, both in public life as well as private? Well, my, my dad uh, passed away a couple of years ago, and I would say that he and my mother uh, certainly directed my life in a very positive way. I grew up as a Yankee. I, I grew up in Albany, New York, and moved here about 32 years ago. Um, so I'm very uh, uh, appreciative of my family and what they've been able to do. And then there's a number of people around this community that have befriended me or supported or encouraged me, and uh, too many people to name, but uh, there are just a lot of good people in this community. They have, they have good values. Uh, they're very... Uh, uh, philanthropic. I mean, I mentioned the cultural center, $38 million of private money 
I mean, tell me any other community in the Carolinas or anywhere that, that come up with that kind of money to build a cultural center committed to the next generation. I think right. it's a great statement about the values of this community and who we are. Right. So I, there are a lot of people that I am thankful for sharing this life with. And, you know, I want to give back, um, but I also recognize it is a team effort, and none of us do it by ourselves. And uh, we're only successful if everybody wants us to be successful. Your Honor, we've run out of time. Thanks Thank so you. much for being with us Thanks this for being with us. Too. Absolutely. Stay tuned to a little more with Bill Barnett, the mayor of Spartanburg, coming up next. Member of the South Carolina Business Hall of Fame, a winner of the Order of the Palmetto, Citizen of the Year, Business Leader of the Year, all these great accomplishments. If you sat here the last 30 minutes, you'd recognize Bill Barnett puts the focus back on others. The tremendous family around him, his wife and three kids, his parents, all his friends and supporters. It's not all about Bill Barnett. It's about the city of Spartanburg and making a difference every day. This tremendous community, whether it was the Miss South Carolina pageant, or all the great events happening, the 12,000 12, students matriculating to this city annually. It's all about others, and Bill Barnett's making a difference every day, but with a lot of other help. Bill, thanks so much for being with us this Thank morning. Thank you very much. Definitely, yeah.